Australia's investors reporting a rise in funds under management in its latest update. Its Australian operations now number more than $600 million, but after well, a tough year, as expected, from 2020. Uh, what's ahead this year? Brendan Malone joins us. He is Ray's Invest Chief Executive for Australia. Brendan, great to talk to you. Morning, Nadine, Andrew. Happy New Year. Thank Happy you. New Year. Happy New Year to all our fantastic customers that have helped us <laughs> deliver these fantastic We results. hope they're all watching AusBiz, so don't do we? Yeah. So do, or, or on the app. <laughs> yeah. All, all right. Okay. So talk us through then. Let's have a, a brief look at where you've been as far as 2020 yes. is concerned. Given those challenges, um, what, what do you attribute your success to in the past uh, year? Yeah, I think, look, we listed on the ASX nearly two and a half years ago and the consistency in the delivery of the strategy that we, that we outlined, we've delivered it. Culminating that with the customer support teams that we have in all our businesses, it's, it's delivering for the customer. It's we're listening to the customers. We keep uh, reinventing the app, keeping the engagement there. That, that has helped us, our customers, stick, th stick with us through such a tough 2020 when you look at the, both COVID and the market volatility, but also the millennials or the customer base that we have, you know, they were impacted. You know, we saw that, you know, to, to see the super fund numbers grow over 26% year on year or over the last 12 months with th nearly 13 million of that through COVID early releases. This, the, the success, I believe, comes down to the, the, the unique platform we have, but the delivery we're giving to our customers. So I'm curious then, what is the metric you are most interested in improving upon in 2021? Does it come down to funds under management? Does it come down to active customer growth, um, growth in some of those emerging markets? I'm curious. Yes, yeah, it's, it's active customers. Our platform and our business model and, and the revenue streams behind that comes down to the active customers. Without having active customers, there is no revenue. So how do we increase that? We increase that through the product development, uh, both here in Australia and overseas, but also the international expansion into Southeast Asia. Uh, as you know, we're live in Indonesia, we're live in Malaysia, uh, and you know, 2021 is going to see us go, sort of make big steps ahead in uh, Thailand. And there, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that you're um, obviously skewed to the millennials. Um, so in terms of the products you're offering, are you looking at expanding that at all and perhaps, you know, expanding your base as far as your demographic is concerned? Yeah, look, Andrew, that, that's the excitement that we're going into 2021 with. We have some really massive products. It's probably the biggest change to the app since launch four and a half years ago. We've got some great customised portfolios, some other diff some other products coming online in the next couple of weeks and the next couple of, in the next quarter, which continues that engagement. But the important part is that we are listening to our customers, like we did with the Emerald or, or the Social Responsible portfolio, like we did with the Sapphire portfolio that was released in May this year. The customers have asked for it. We've looked at it, we've built it, and we keep delivering and supporting what they need. Okay, so I'm curious. Just uh, you've got your growth plans in place. If you're looking about growing in some of those emerging markets, clearly COVID is still a concern. What other risks are there when it comes to execution there? Because there's a different regulatory environment. You know, there's lots of balls that you've got to be juggling at the same time. Yes, and, and, and that's key. That's why we do it. We have such strong teams, both in Indonesia and in Malaysia. They're on the ground. Uh, you know, we talk, I talk to them daily, constantly. There's constant feedback. It's, it's as long as we've got the right people on the, right, on the ground in the right organisations or the right countries, they're delivering. Uh, and that's the key to that financial or, or the market or the regulatory risk. Uh, and then the general whole market risk is something that we keep an eye on. Uh, hey, you, you mentioned your Sapphire portfolio. I'm interested to get your point of view. Obviously, this is as far as exposure to crypto is concerned. Certainly, Bitcoin, we've seen that amazing spike uh, just in recent times. Are you comfortable with where that's at at the moment? Yes, look, we, we launched it you know, on the 22nd of May this year and we have over sort of $50 million in that fund or over 22,500 Australians in that portfolio allocation. And the beautiful part about the app is you can rebalance or switch between portfolios at any time. Uh, so if, if you're in the Sapphire and you're not comfortable with the way that, that Bitcoin's gone, you can switch out to one, either the Emerald or one of the other conservative or aggressive portfolios. So it's giving them the ability to go in, but we're, we're delivering exposure. You know, we're one of the few, country, few companies in the world that can offer the Bitcoin exposure, 2 or 5% allocation of your portfolio through the world, um, but they can change. That, that's the important part, and it gives them a controlled and an easy understanding of Bitcoin or an education on, on crypto or Bitcoin in the app. 